I spoke last time about using lime mortar, but I thought I should say a little bit about what lime actually is, because there's a bit to know, and that's a little bit more than there is to know about using cement, which has everybody, myself included, as well as everybody who built anything in the last half of the 20th century, saying, go on, pass us over the cement, a bit of cement will sort this out. Um, and I think it's a shame if that little bit of knowledge acts as a barrier to people using lime. So, this episode aims to answer the question, what is lime anyway? Episode 15. What is lime? Specifically, what's all this about? NHL stands for Natural Hydraulic Lime. And this number here takes a bit of explaining. There are two types of lime. Air lime and hydraulic lime. Air lime cures in the presence of CO2 from the air by a process of carbonation, and hydraulic lime cures in the presence of water in a process of hydration. First of all, let's take a look at air lime and carbonation. This involves something called the lime cycle. To make it nice and clear, I've got the lime cycle written on the front of the concrete mixer here. So, to make lime, you start out with limestone or calcium carbonate, CaCO3, and you heat it in a kiln, which drives off CO2. And that gives you calcium oxide, CaO, which is known as quicklime. Next, you add water, H2O, and that gives you calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, which is known as slaked lime. And then the final part of the cycle is that in the presence of air, you reabsorb CO2 to get back to calcium carbonate, CaCO3. So if I crank up the mixer, we can go once around the lime cycle, which is what happens if you were to use air lime in a building. You start out with limestone, put it in a kiln, heat it up and drive off the CO2. And you get quick lime, which is highly reactive and a bit dangerous. So you put water on it. And you get Slaked lime. Next thing is you put it in a building and wait for it to reabsorb the CO2. And you get back to limestone. This entire cycle is carbon neutral. All the CO2 that's emitted when you bake the lime is reabsorbed when you cure it. So there's no chemical reason for any CO2 to be emitted. But limestone, quick lime, slaked lime, limestone. But of course you need something to drive the cycle. You need to get this heat from somewhere. In this metaphor, that would be the electricity that I'm using to turn the concrete mixer. But theoretically, if you were to bake the lime with power from renewable sources, there's no reason why you couldn't produce a lime that cured by carbonation without emitting any CO2 at all. So this sounds great. If you could build using air lime that was fired in a kiln that was powered by a hydroelectric power plant, then your project would have almost no carbon footprint at all. The problem is that this carbonation process, where the slaked lime reabsorbs CO2 to become calcium carbonate, is very slow. It can take months or even years for the lime mortar to reabsorb all the carbon dioxide and come to full strength. So what's going to hold up your wall in the meantime? The answer, of course, is hydraulic lime. This cures in the presence of water, and it does so quickly. You don't have to wait around for it to slowly reabsorb CO2. Hydraulic lime is made in a similar way to air lime, by heating calcium carbonate and driving off CO2. But this time, there's a bit of clay added to the mix, and the clay contains minerals like alumina and silica that combine with calcium carbonate to form silicates and aluminates. And it's these compounds that allow the hydraulic lime to set in the presence of water. So now we have two processes. This one, the lime cycle, that produces air lime, and this offshoot, that produces hydraulic lime. And this one is carbon neutral, all the CO2 that's emitted is reabsorbed, but this one is not. The CO2 is emitted when you bake the calcium carbonate with the clay, but when the lime cures in the presence of water, it doesn't reabsorb CO2. So now we have a balancing act between how much hydraulic lime there is and how much air lime there is. The amount of clay present in the mix when the lime is baked 
determines how much of the calcium carbonate is used up in this reaction to produce an air line and how much of it is used up in this reaction to produce a hydraulic line. If there's not very much clay in the mix then the ratio of air lime to hydraulic lime will be tipped in favour of air lime and we say that it's weakly hydraulic whereas if there's more clay in the mix then the ratio of air lime to hydraulic lime will be tipped in favour of hydraulic lime and we say that it's more strongly hydraulic. So if we return now to this thing, hydraulic lime is a lime that cures on contact with water that's been made by baking calcium carbonate in the presence of clay. And natural hydraulic lime just means that the clay was naturally present in the limestone before it was ground up to make the lime. But this would more accurately be called natural semi-hydraulic lime because it actually contains some hydraulic lime and some air lime with the ratio being determined by how much clay was there when it was baked. And this number here refers to what that ratio is. This number shows whether it's strongly hydraulic or weakly hydraulic. You can buy NHL2, which is weakly hydraulic, NHL3.5 or NHL5. I made a little scales to illustrate it. If the ratio of air lime to hydraulic lime is tipped in favour of air lime, then you get NHL2. If there's a little less air lime and a little more hydraulic lime, then NHL3.5. And if it's tipped further again to favour hydraulic lime, then you get NHL5, the most strongly hydraulic mix of all. NHL2, 3.5 and 5 roughly correspond to what used to be called feebly, moderately and eminently hydraulic lime back in the day. And because each has different properties, you've got to choose the right one according to what you're trying to do. NHL2 contains very little hydraulic lime, so it has to set mainly through carbonation, which means that it sets very slowly. That also means that it's more vapour permeable and less waterproof. NHL3.5 has a little more hydraulic lime, so it sets a little faster. It's a little less vapour permeable and it's a little more waterproof. And NHL5, with the most hydraulic lime, sets most quickly, is least vapour permeable, and is the most waterproof. This means that if you were going to be working indoors, or outside on something that was sheltered, you might use NHL2. And if you were outdoors on a wall that was going to get a bit of rain, but you still wanted it to be breathable, you might use NHL3.5. And if you're working on something that had to be strong very fast, or was going to be really battered with rain, like a chimney perhaps, you might use NHL5. Remember as well that it's only air lime that reabsorbs CO2 while it's curing. The more the ratio is tipped towards hydraulic lime, the less CO2 will be reabsorbed. So NHL2 reabsorbs the most CO2, NHL3.5 a little less, and NHL5 absorbs the least CO2 of all. This means that if you want to minimise the carbon footprint of the mortar that you're making, you need to use the most weakly hydraulic NHL that you can that will still do the job you need it to do. That is, the NHL with the lowest number. And that's why you don't just buy NHL5 because it's strongest. So that explains what lime is. One last thing that might be worth mentioning is the possible confusion between the word hydraulic and the word hydrated. Hydration is just the process of adding water to something. And if something's already had the water added, then it's hydrated. Whereas hydraulic refers to when the lime sets in the presence of water. So quick lime needs to be hydrated to make slaked lime, but hydraulic lime also needs to be hydrated to make cured hydraulic lime. Here it is in a bit more detail. When air lime is made by baking calcium carbonate to make quick lime, Adding water to make slaked lime is a process of hydration. If you just add enough H2O to turn the calcium oxide into calcium hydroxide, you end up with a dry powder called dry hydrated lime. If you add an excess of water, you end up with a hydrated lime putty. Both of these are hydrated limes, but neither of them are hydraulic because they don't contain the silicates and aluminates necessary to set on contact with water. If on the other hand you make a hydraulic lime by baking calcium carbonate along with clay to make a quick lime 
and then add just enough H2O to turn the calcium oxide into calcium hydroxide, you end up with a dry hydrated lime that's also hydraulic because it contains those silicates and aluminates, so it can set on contact with water. If you add an excess of water, obviously, it's going to start to set hydraulically. So you can only store this kind of lime as a powder, you can't store it as a putty. So the NHL that I'm using, that contains both air lime and hydraulic lime, has been made with just enough water to slake the air lime, but not enough water to allow the hydraulic lime to cure. When I make mortar with it, I add more water and the hydraulic lime cures. Because it's curing through a process of adding more water, we say that it also cures by hydration. And having said all that, hopefully I'll be able to remember it myself. Limestone, quick lime, slaked lime, limestone. Got it. Have you got it? Good. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, visit the Patreon page, links in the description box. Bye.